Well, good morning. It's good to see you this morning, and I'm going to ask that you would please stand and worship the Lord Jesus Christ with us this morning. He is worthy. Welcome back. How could this happen again? Many were incredulous over the weekend when we got those notifications about yet another powerful earthquake in Haiti. Our team raced right away to the island and report to now with the devastating conditions they found. Our Matt Gutman files this report. Lucia Seville and her family dug two graves this week, one for her 18-year-old daughter, Rosna, and the other for her one-year-old grandchild. Both were killed in Haiti's earthquake Saturday. The grief in that cemetery of broken tombs felt physical. Like so many here, she couldn't afford coffins. She took us down the road to her house, clutching a surviving daughter's arm. She led me down that slope, her house flattened. She described having to crawl on her belly to pull family members out of the rubble, including the lifeless body of her daughter. With a magnitude of 7.2, this earthquake even more powerful than the cataclysmic earthquake of 2010. This time ripping through many rural areas in Haiti's southwestern peninsula, like where Lucia lives in the town of Marceline. The damage here, unimaginable. The earthquake shearing off sides of mountains, pulverizing tens of thousands of homes and killing around 2,000 people. With roads impassable, some of the dead had to be ridden out of villages on the backs of motorbikes. The earthquake tore this voodoo temple right off the mountain. Now these firefighters have been working here for two days now. They believe there are more bodies in the rubble and this goes on for house after house. Hospitals gutted by the quake are filled with patients, many of them in tents or hallways. The Coast Guard medevacing over 100 patients, but even today, those injured in the quake continue arriving at the hospital. Okay, does your neck hurt? This is one of the patients who continues to trickle into hospitals like this. Survivors of the earthquake, he has a double pelvic fracture who have been suffering for days without medical care. And tonight, like Lucia, hundreds of thousands remain homeless. And just 36 hours after Tropical Storm Grace plowed through here, these quake victims getting soaked as they waited for care at a hospital. Hundreds of others hunkering down in the soccer field amid downpours bringing up to 15 inches of rain. It's not good here by the coast. My home was destroyed. I have nothing, nothing to use to sleep. Look, there's a lot of children here. I really have nothing. But many chose to ride it out closer to their unlivable homes. 
Sarah and her extended family had been staying outside under this leaky tarp. Held up by a stick, and that's all they have right now. Whoa. And I asked them why they were smiling. They answered, because they're alive. The storm turning creeks into rivers of mud, pummeling the region. The following morning, we went back to check on Sarah and her family. This is what's left of the tarp that they were under earlier. Obviously, knocked down. The winds from that storm rattling the bus all night long, making it impossible to sleep. They tell us they have no clothes other than what they're wearing. Everything else is wet from the storms. And many here are already feeling forgotten. Haiti has been in the midst of a political crisis after the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse last month. The investigation of the hit on him ongoing, and of course, all of this on top of a pandemic and generations of poverty that have made this one of the poorest places on earth. And in many places, violent gangs are preventing much needed aid by blocking roads and attacking relief convoys. And some of the aid being doled out, unleashing chaos. All over the world, they come to help because the need is great. We need people to come to help. We need American, we need Canadian. UNICEF estimates it'll need at least $15 million to respond to just the most urgent needs. The U.S. has sent an amphibious warship to assist in relief efforts, but for many Haitians living in rural areas like Lucia, getting any aid has been impossible. We're checking in on Lucia. It's obviously still raining pretty hard uh, right after that storm. Lucia and her family have been sleeping on the porch of a neighbor's house. All they had to shield them from that storm was a soaked blanket. I have nobody but God. Even if you did have a friend, everyone else is in the same situation, so they have to help themselves first before they help me. Lucia showed us some of the old photos in her album of Rosna, never dreaming that the album of memories would be all that she had left. Before we left, I asked her if she could ever recover, and she replied, I will never stop crying. Matt Gutman, ABC News, Haiti. Eye-opening, huh? Mm -hmm. You have an opportunity, if you want to, uh, for the disaster relief to help the people in Haiti. Any donations that you give to the church will go to uh, Samaritan's Purse. They're already on the ground helping the people there. So um, if you want to give to that, just put it in an envelope, put Haiti on it, and we'll be sure that it gets to Samaritan's Purse. Uh, but most of all, pray for them. Pray for these families and that somehow God will get glory out of it and that they'll be souls saved. That's a, maybe be a wake-up call for some and make that happen. Okay, next week, on a happier note, we're going to have a celebration next Sunday on appreciation of our pastor. We're thankful that he's here and he's having his... So thankful he's here and his family. We're going to have a third anniversary celebration next Sunday evening. It's also our fifth Sunday fellowship. I think we're going to have a movie. We'll let you know on the times on that uh, next week. But we'll be sure and put a flock note out on that. And so we need to bring snacks and goodies to have after um, our celebration or after our evening services. And um, cards and notes. If you want to give a card, tell them how much you appreciated them or a note, just do that and bring them. We'll put a, have a basket available to, for that as well. Okay, we're going to have a date of service, and this is um, something that we're supposed to, that we're going to do to help the community. Now we've got a call in to St. Jude, and they were going to talk to the pastor and see if there's something over there that they need help with. They're as minimal as we are, if not more so, uh, as far as people goes, and there may be something that needs to be done in their building or outside or whatever. So I'll, I'll talk to Lula again after she talks to the pastor and we'll see if there's something we can do to help them as a church that's in our community. Or if you have ideas, if you know somebody, and we wanna help our church first, if, if there's people in our congregation that need help with repairs, yard work, pick up trash or whatever. Or if you have any ideas, let the missions committee know or just let Stephanie know and we'll get it to the committee. And uh, 
we'll decide what we're going to do for that day of service. Now, for ongoing things that we need to do in the future that may take more than a day, also give those suggestions, and we'll look into that and see what we're capable of doing. So, evening offerings. In case you um, don't get to come on Sunday nights, but you'd like to help for the offering, how many appreciate the pretty green grass and the flowers we have outside? It takes money to pay that water bill to keep it looking like that. So we, our summer utilities are big. So if you want to help with that, just put sprinkler system, just water bill. Put water bill on an envelope, and it will go toward that. If you're not able to come on Sunday night, but that's what our Sunday night offering is designated for, is to help pay those summer utilities because they're more than they used to be. Okay, right? Let's have our offering. Let's pray. We're thankful, Lord, <clears throat> that we live in a country that we have the freedom to worship you, to praise you, to come and go. We pray especially, Lord, for Haiti and the issues and the tragedy that's going on over there that, that Lord, only you can take care of, that you bless those people's spirit, you provide a way that they can get back on their feet. We pray for Afghanistan, Lord, and the issues that's going on there, that decisions are made that are, should be correct decisions and the decisions you would want to have done. Bless this offering today from this church that, that we can help here, we can help in any other way that we need to. Show us the way. Guide, it, guide us with your spirit today because it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Charlotte. God bless you. Would you please stand for call to worship at Psalms 135, 1 through 3, and read along with us. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise, Praise him, him, O you servants, servants of the Lord, Lord. you who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. God. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord for the, the Lord, Lord is good. good. Sing praises to his name, for it is pleasant. Church said amen. Amen. We're going to have some words up here, uh, regeneration. We want you to see this and say this as loud as we possibly can before we go into tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Re let's read together. Regeneration, justification, justification sanctification, 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 glorification, all come through, through trusting, trusting in Jesus. Amen.
you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. And Lord, I'm alive and well. And your spirit is within me because you died and you rose again. Amen. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. I'm accepted. You were condemned. You were I'm alive and well, I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Let's say I'm forgiven one more time, let's say it again. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, I'm accepted. I'm alive and well, I'm alive and well, the Spirit is within me, cause you died and rose again, amazing love.
first part of it says you are worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power and he is worthy the song says worthy of our worship thank you Lord Jesus Sing. 
seated. Chris, you can start that. Just like Elijah was, had to be encouraged, we also have to remember he is coming back. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. Oh, and it's closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call. At the midnight cry, here's that encouragement. We'll be going home when Jesus steps up on a cloud to call his children. The dead in Christ shall rise. see prophecy fulfilling Hallelujah Oh and the signs of the times they're appearing everywhere I can almost hear the Father say Son go your children, yeah, yeah, and at the midnight cry, well, the bride of Christ shall rise when Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children. Oh, the dead in Christ. Shall rise to meet him in the air, and then those that remain will be quickly changed. Oh, and at the midnight cry. When Jesus comes again, here it is. And then those that remain will be quickly changed. Oh, yes, we will. And at the midnight cry, When he comes again, and at the midnight cry, when Jesus comes again, when Jesus comes again. Exciting to think about that great and glorious day, our blessed hope when we um, will get to see him as he is and when he comes for us. Um, but before he comes for us, we're going to go to him. 
and we're going to go to him in a, a time of a prayer as we've uh, added a new uh, element to our order of uh, worship to have a, a call to prayer. Uh, and uh, today, uh, our, our theme that I want to encourage us as a church to pray about um, uh, is some nations, uh, the nations of uh, Haiti and Afghanistan. You know, our Lord uh, said that his house should be a house of prayer uh, for all nations. Uh, and and those, those two nations of Haiti and, and Afghanistan are going through through much turmoil, uh, for, for which we ought to pray for the nation as a whole, as well as the believers in particular uh, that uh, God has placed uh, in those, those places. In fact, you know, uh, many of you I, or have, have been to Haiti with, uh, with the Johnsons and their uh, um, mission work that went on there for, for years, and he did tell me that uh, that the earthquake that happened in Haiti, it was in a little different part of the country, and so it didn't affect um, uh, their part uh, uh, too much where the mission and the school uh, is. Uh, but really the, the major threat that the believers there are facing are the gangs uh, that are there that are taking advantage of uh, the situation, uh, even rape gangs. He said they're just, they're just brutal uh, and just, just horrendous uh, for for the people there and the government either cannot or will not uh, do anything you know the turmoil that they've had with their uh, president being uh, assassinated so I think it's good for us to to pray for the body of Christ that's in Haiti they're in hiding uh, they're just just hunkered down and hiding out uh, and so we ought to pray for our brothers and sisters there a similar type situation for the fellow believers in Afghanistan with all of the um, stuff uh, going on there. In fact, um, the, uh, the underground Afghanistan church gave a, a statement uh, through Frontier Alliance International. And let me just, just read this about Christians there being targeted for execution. It says, the Taliban has a hit list of known Christians and they are targeting to pursue and kill the U.S. Embassy is defunct, and there is no longer a safe place for believers to take refuge. All borders to neighboring countries are closed, and all flights to and from have been halted, with the exception of private planes. People are fleeing into the mountains, looking for asylum. They are fully reliant upon God, who is the only one who can and will protect them. The Taliban are going door to door, taking women and children, and people must mark their houses with an X if they have a girl over 12 years old so that the Taliban can take them. If they find a young girl and the house was not marked, they will execute the entire family. If a married woman 25 years or older has been found, the Taliban promptly will kill her husband and do whatever they want to her and then sell her as a sex slave. Uh, the, these are the conditions that our fellow believers are in. Uh, very, very difficult times for Christians in other parts of the world. In fact, Open Doors USA ranks Afghanistan as the second uh, toughest place in the world to be a Christian. Um, and so I think it would be good for us in our, in our blessing uh, to offer a prayer for our fellow believers in much dire circumstances than, than we face. And so let's, let's pray for the nations of, of Haiti, of Afghanistan, just as, as a whole, and for the believers in particular. And, and I will uh, open it up if any of you would like to offer a prayer, a public prayer, uh, for uh, any of the issues uh, regarding that. Please, please feel free to do so. Uh, and then let's just have a, a silent time going to our Lord, who will one day come to us. But let's go to him in prayer and plead uh, for these dire situations and for our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ.
Father, we pray that you might hear our cries on the behalf of, of these two nations in turmoil. And Lord, for the, the believers in those lands, Lord, that as they cast their care upon you, that you might reassure them that you care for them. Father, we would pray that you would hear our request uh, in heaven, your dwelling place, and that you would answer here on earth our dwelling place. And so we say amen to these uh, prayers and leave it in your merciful hand. Amen and amen. Well, our message today is going to be in the uh, book of Psalms, or uh, Psalm number 46, and so... I hope you have a copy of the Old Testament, and we will uh, uh, give attention to this uh, tremendous uh, psalm uh, that is uh, recorded for us. And if you uh, have it and you're willing and able, I invite you to stand for the reading of Psalm number 46. For the choir director... A psalm of the sons of Korah set to Alamoth a song. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, and though the mountains skip into the heart of the sea, and though its waters roar and foam, 
And though the mountains quake at its swelling pride, Selah, there is a river whose stream make glad the city of God, the holy dwelling places of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations made an uproar. The kingdoms tottered. He raised his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come, behold the works of the Lord who has wrought desolations in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot with fire. Cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. And let's again go to our God in prayer. Our Father, we thank you for hearing us when we speak to you. And Father, we are so grateful that you have condescended to speak to us. That you have given us your word uh, inspired by your spirit to be written down by your apostles and prophets so that, that we might hear from you and take, take great comfort from your, from your message that you have already supplied for our time of need. Lord, might this a psalm be a balm to our souls this morning. In Christ's name, amen. Well, as I'm sure that we are uh, all pretty much aware, it has been quite a tumultuous time in our uh, world lately. Uh, there have been earthquakes and, and storms. Uh, there have been wars that are ending, uh, and yet they are producing more strife and less peace and safety than there were before. The ground underneath our feet, uh, figuratively, or in some place times literally is shaking nations are shaking wars are ceasing and causing more turmoil you know there, there are a lot of big big global things that are going on in our world and they are on, on our on our mind and and you know I, I don't know if, if it weighs on on your mind these things that are going on and like Afghanistan and and Haiti these, these, these are big deals but maybe there's a, a big deal going on in your own life, a personal big thing. You know, maybe your world is in fact shaking. Well, uh, Psalm 46 uh, is a balm for the troubled soul. It is a quiet rest amid the loud and crazy world that is all, all around. Now this uh, psalm and the psalmist does not in any way hide the turmoil that they were experiencing or they had seen at the time. They, 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 don't, uh, they don't whitewash things, you know, at all to, to, cover, uh, to cover it up. It, does, it doesn't hide the turmoil, but it, it does show our, our hiding place in the midst of all the turmoil. You see, this psalm calls out with very loud decibels over all the destruction. And it says for us to be still and to know that God is God. Against all the rumblings and all the shakings and all the cries going on in the world, this psalm cries out and says, be still and know that I am God. There are three uh, Selahs, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that uh, correctly, uh, three Selahs in this uh, uh, psalm. And, and a Selah, uh, you, you might notice there in your, your translation, it's not all translations put the, the, the Selahs in, but this uh, Selah is a, is a Hebrew term really with a kind of an uncertain meaning. So some think that it kind of means maybe a a pause in the, in, in, in the music. Uh, in the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Old Testament, uh, it is translated an, an intermission. 
And, and so, so it could be that these sailors here in, in this psalm could be a break, a, a rest in, in the song, kind of like you have in music. I don't know how to read music, but there's these little symbols that say, you know, what to do. And maybe this sailor is kind of a, a cue to have for the word stop, and maybe there's a little instrumental playing in the background so that both the singer and the hearer can contemplate what was just being sung. He, he, he sings a verse and then he says, Selah, okay, let's, let's think about this for a little, little bit. Okay, and, and he sings some more and then he, there's a Selah, okay, let, let's contemplate and, and ponder what has just been said. You, you know, we all need a Selah, especially when things are very unsettled in our world. Psalm 46 doesn't dismiss the destructions in life, but it gives us instructions on how to sail when our world is unsettled. Whether it's the world around us or our, our personal world, this psalm mentions those things. It mentions earthquakes. It mentions wars. It mentions shaking cities. But it calls us to the unshakable truth that God is the God of the storm. And we can sail if we hide in the eye of the storm in which he is the one that is in control. And so let's think just briefly about this psalm. Notice the title. It says it's for the choir director. It's, 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 it's just a song. You know, these psalms are inspired songs and, and sacred hymns. This is the inspired hymnal given to us by, by God Almighty. And you know, there's something so special and unique about music. I mean, music is the language of the soul. And, and we don't have any notes here to, these, uh, to this song or to any of, of these songs. And so this kind of tells us that, you know, we, we have great liberty over the styles of our preferred music because it is the message of these songs, the message of this music. That is what is important. It's not the notes. It's the words. And we can put our own notes in, but there's something about the message that comes by way of music. And let me encourage you that the Psalms are a great place to go to, to feel the emotion of a moment. Just like songs speak to us, the, the Psalms should speak to us. They resonate with our real life. They are poetic expressions of praise in the midst of our problems. And so let me encourage you, if your world is shaking, to immerse yourself in the Psalms. And it will resonate with your soul. And so let's hear what the psalmist sings here in verse 1. God is our, our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. He, he's, he's our refuge. I mean, do you, do you have a storm shelter? Uh, do, do, you, do, you have a, do you have a place to go? A, a place to hide when... Uh, when things are getting bad? Where, where do you go? Where, where do you hide and take refuge? When do you, where do you hide when your world is falling apart? Well, here the psalmist is saying God is our refuge. He's saying God is our hiding place. Psalm chapter 32 and verse number 7 uh, says, You are my hiding place and you preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. Selah. Rest and pause and think about God being our hiding place. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse number 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run to it and we're safe. That's where we go and that's where we hide. That is where we run. Because God is our refuge, and He is our strength. Do do you feel weak? Weak and undone and have no power? Well, God is our strength. We, We run to Him in our weakness so that we can get strength. 
We read in uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 10, Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. And you know, the, 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 the Scripture gives this paradoxical truth that when we are weak, that is when we become strong. If we run to Him in our, as our refuge and He becomes our strength. In fact, let me read Paul's words in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, verses uh, 9 to 11 and he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for power is perfected in weakness most gladly therefore I will boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ may dwell in me therefore I am well confident with weakness with insult with distress with persecutions with difficulties for Christ's sake for when I am weak then I am strong God is our, our refuge and He is our strength when we need a hiding place and we need some power in the midst of our impotence. And here the psalmist reminds us that God is a very present help in a time of trouble. What, what a comforting word there. He, it's not that God is just a help and He is a help, but He is a present help. Not just a present help, but a very present help. In time of trouble. You remember the disciples were in a boat one time in a great storm. They were in a, in a great trouble. And where was their Lord in the midst of their trouble? He was in the boat with them. He was right there asleep on the cushion. He, he was right there. He was very, very close to them. In the midst of their time of greatest need. Do you know that God is close to us? God is there and He is as close as a prayer. He is right, right there. Psalm 145, um, let's see here, Psalm 145 and verse number 18 reminds us that God is near. It says, The Lord is near to all who call upon Him, to all who call upon Him in truth. Well, what a great truth to be reminded that God is our refuge and, and strength and He is a very present help in time of trouble. And, and there are great times of trouble. Look at verse 2. But we will not fear, though the earth should change, and though the mountains skip into the heart of the sea, and though its waters roar and foam, and though the mountains quake, at its swelling pride. Uh, I mean, these, these verses uh, describe, I, I guess, maybe a literal great earthquake. Maybe it's, you know, just descriptive of just the turmoil you know, going on. But here we have this, this earthquake, this, this churning of the sea and the mountains quaking and, and shaking. Well, I tell you, I, I mean, I can't even imagine what the people of Haiti must have felt like uh, when the earthquake hit and even you know today the helplessness when land is is quaking and the storms come and the raining and 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 imagine the misery imagine the unsettling nature of that the earth was changing for them now I, I do think this is probably talking about the topography of of what was going on, uh, but I think our society and our reality in life also feels some changing, some quaking beneath our feet. I mean, I, I've never felt a big earthquake. It was uh, disturbing enough to feel some little ones that I've uh, uh, felt, but, but does it feel to you like our earth is changing? That the ground is, is shifting? That the, the things are, are just so much in, in motion. What do we do in the midst of an earthquake, a literal one, or just the shakings of society? The psalmist says, therefore we will not fear. Wow. Though the earth should change. You, you know what the antidote to being afraid is? The antidote to being afraid is to fear God. You know, when... when all of our fears might dissipate a little bit if we really feared God. 
And we realize that, that He is God and He is in control. And so even when the mountains quake and shake and are thrown into the heart of the sea, we will not fear. You know, the trembling time is a time of trust. It's, it's a time God gives us to say, will, will you trust me? Psalm 56 and verse 3, What time I am afraid... I will trust in you. Remember the disciples in the boat and the scared and in the, in the storm and Jesus was right there with them. And he, he spoke to the storm, he commanded the storm and then they didn't fear the storm anymore because they were really scared of Jesus who could speak to the storm and command the storm and then they had a, a proper placed fear. You know, the, the fear of God would cure us so much of a lot of the fear of the world. And, and, and then the psalmist, after he, he, he says this in the first three verses, and he goes, Selah. Puts this little, you know, I don't know, musical notation, whatever, a little pause, a little a thought to, to think about this. So stop and ponder this just for a little bit, the, 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 the psalmist says. Contemplate it and, and be confronted with these truths here. Just, just be quiet for a second. Think about it. In, in the midst of the, the quaking and the shaking, if we're quiet, we can start praising. Didn't Paul and Silas do that in, in a jail cell and in the midst of an, an earthquake? And they were singing hymns at midnight in prison when the ground started shaking. I wonder what psalm they were singing. I, I don't know. It, it could have been that though the mountains skip into the heart of the sea, we will not fear though the earth should change. Maybe, maybe they were singing that. Who, who knows? We, we ought to take a sailor and take a pause. Well, the, the, the psalmist goes on after the, after the Selah, and we read in verse 4 and 5, and there was a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy dwelling place of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. Here, this, this section raises our thoughts after, after we, we think about God being our refuge and strength, even after the, the earthquakes and all the, the changing in, uh, in, in society and, and in the, the earth itself, and we shouldn't fear in that, and you, we contemplate it. And now he says, okay, now, now think about the city of God. You're, the cities around you are shaking. This, this section, I think, is raising our thoughts to heaven itself. He, he may be talking about Jerusalem, but I think at least by way of application, he, he's raising our thoughts to the new Jerusalem, this, this city whose rivers make, uh, make glad the city of God. The city of God where we read in Revelation 22 where there is a, a river of life flowing through it. Where the tree of life is there and then the fruit in it is for the, for the healing of the nations. I tell you that uh, it is such an encouragement from the psalmist to lift up our eyes from our broken cities to the city that can never be broken Verse number 5, the psalmist says that God is in the midst of her and she will not be moved. When the cities of man shake, remember that the city of God is secure. Our unsettling and insecure world should remind us of a sure and a settled heaven. The writer of Hebrews says, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. When everything shakes around us, remember that our kingdom cannot be shaken. And we have a, a citizenship within heaven, an unshakable heaven that has 12 foundations. And it can never be insecure. Though we live in the midst of insecurity, remember the city of our God. 
In verse number 6 and 7, it goes on, he says, that The nations made an uproar and the kingdoms tottered. He raised his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Here we see that this turmoil of the, the nations and the kingdoms, the cause of it is none other than his voice. It is God himself who has raised his voice over the created order and caused this turmoil. The earth melts and kingdoms fall at the command of the king of kings. It, it's his voice that does it. Uh, Isaiah chapter 2, uh, I think in verse 19, it says, God, when he, he rises to shake the earth. Who is it that causes these things? It's like Jesus in the boat. His voice calls the storm and it calms the storm. Because his voice is the voice of the creator. And his voice melts the mountains. And we ought to remember that it is his voice. And he says that the Lord of hosts is with us. It is this God the God that his voice is controlling all this, he is the one that is with us. The Lord of hosts, the God of armies, the God of the Taliban army and the God of the American army. He's the God of all of the armies and he is the God that is with us. His voice commands what happens upon the earth. And so we can run to him in our refuge. It says that the God of Jacob is our stronghold. Oh, I tell you, we hide in him in the midst of the storm. And we take refuge in the eye of the storm that he has commanded. It's his voice that does this. And so the psalmist again says, Selah. Okay, so stop a little bit. Stop and ponder and, and, and think about this just a little bit. Think about the security of heaven above over against the insecurity that's around here on earth below and find security in God's sovereignty that his voice orders all things. Remember this. You know, the, he's our refuge and strength. We, we, we can run to him and even when the mountains are falling into the sea, we don't have to fear because God is in control of the mountains. And even in all of these uh, desolations and stuff, it is his voice. And he is the God of armies and he uh, is on our side. Um, look at verse 8 and 9. Come and behold the works of the Lord who has wrought desolations on the earth. He makes wars to cease and to come. Uh, he makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. And he breaks the bow and he cuts the spear in two and he burns the chariot with fire. Uh, here the psalmist bids us in his song to open our eyes to see what God has done. It, isn't that, that interesting? Come and behold the works of the Lord. He's, he's singing to us. He's given us a couple of verses, a couple of sailors to kind of uh, ponder a little bit. And, and he says, okay, open your eyes on what's going around and behold what God has done Maybe this psalm was penned after a great battle and a war, and so you have all of the, the carnage that is left over and the desolation from, from the war. Matthew Henry had a, an awesome little quote. He says, war is a tragedy that commonly destroys the stage that it is acted on. I mean, that's what war does. You ever seen pictures of the aftermath of war? And... And what happens and the effects of war, the death and the carnage, the suffering and, and the death. And we see these images and in some way we're, we're revolted and those images are there to get our attention. Because when we see the images like on the, the newscast of, of what happened in Haiti or what's going on in Afghanistan, God is graciously showing us this thing to come and behold the works of the Lord. You know, we are to observe the desolations and see what God has wrought. A couple of verses, Isaiah chapter 45. 
Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 6 and 7, Then men may know from the rising to the setting of the sun that there is no one beside me, that I am the Lord and there is no other, the warm one forming light and creating darkness, causing well-being and creating calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. And then we read in Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verses 13 and 14, Consider the work of God, for who is able to straighten what he has bent? In the day of prosperity, be happy, but in the day of adversity, consider God has made the one as well as the other. You know, we we see these things and we're, we're, we're so troubled, but he has given us sight of these things so we can behold what God has done. It wasn't long ago, we stood at the rim of the Grand Canyon and then... Wow, our earth is scarred with the work of God. When he sent the flood and, I, and driving around, you could just, I could envision the, the waters flowing and carving out the mountains and carving out the earth so that we could see it and behold what God has done. And then in verse 11 and 12, I... After we've done some of this beholding, he says, Cease striving and know that I am God and I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. The more common rendering in some of your translations is just be still and know that I am God. Remember that God is your refuge and strength and even though the mountains are being hurled into the heart of the sea, we're, we're We don't fear because remember, though it's shaking down here, it's not shaking on earth. And his voice is doing all this. Behold what he has done in these things. And be still and know that I am God. The shocking things that are happening in our world should stop us in our tracks. We should be still. And we should sail a a little bit, contemplate a little bit, ponder a little bit. The the desolation should give us pause. What, what What is God saying here in this? Is he trying to get our attention in some way, I wonder? We are to consider and know in all of this that God is God. We, you know, uh, as an old theologian of old said, you know, sometimes we, we, our God is too small. You know, we, we often create idols in our own mind and create God in our own image and we make him out so much smaller and impotent than he is. I tell you, God is not a grumpy old grandpa in the sky wringing his hands, wondering what he's going to do and trying his best to fix things if he could just get it together God is God and we are to consider what he is doing his providence orders and rules over all we read in Romans 11 36 that of him to him and through him are all things. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so the psalmist ends this in talking about all of this turmoil and where he hides and where his, his, his comfort is. And he says, I got, I got to look to God and I praise God in the midst of this. He is to be exalted among the nations. He is the Lord of hosts, the God of armies. And he is with us as believers. He is our stronghold. That's why we run to him in all of these things. We are not to look around at the troubling things in our world and to say, where is God? Where where is he? I, I wonder where he is. No, we are to say, behold your God. Look at what he is doing. Maybe he is speaking to us in some way. And so again, he ends by saying, the Lord of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob is our stronghold. Selah. 
Sela, just, okay, amongst all of the, the noise in society, be, be quiet for a moment. Sit and, and think for a moment at, at what we're seeing, at what we're observing. Consider and ponder that God is our refuge when the earth is reeling. When things are tottering back and forth and hither and yon, and the mountains are being thrown into the sea and the, and the earth is, is trembling and kingdoms are shaking and cities are falling, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in the, in the time of trouble. And, and He is the one that is rising to shake the earth. And so where do we hide? We hide in the midst of the storm in the eye of the storm that he is commanding, that is where we hide. We consider that the city of God to which we are eternal citizens is very secure even though all the cities of man are shaking. We ponder the things that God has done, the scars of our world and that are on history, and in this present hour should give us pause and cause us to praise Him because as with Job, He speaks to us out of the storm. Stop and consider. Just take a quiet moment and hear what He has to say because of Him, to Him, and through Him are all things. Selah. When we're unsettled, be still and know that God is God and take refuge in the eye of a storm that he has called, that he commands, and that he can call. I mean, that, this is our hope. This is our refuge. We, we belong to the God of creation. And we are so firm, are firmly held secure in His hand. I mean, I, I would imagine many of you, as I am, are, you know, heartbreaking and torn, and, you know, I, I feel helpless. I can't, I can't affect change. I can't do anything about all of this. What do I do? Where do I go? I go to Him uh, who controls all of this. Um, again, for our, for our invitation uh, today, I, I want to again call us to prayer. I want us to cry out to our God, the Lord of, Lord of armies, the one who controls the planet that He created. And, and might our hearts, might we just cry out to Him and run to Him because He is our hiding place. And let's lift up our, our eyes to heaven for Him to act in our behalf here on earth. And so you can, again, pray where you're seated. You can stand. You can raise your hands. You can fall down. You can get on your knees. The posture is not important. It's, it's that God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in a time of trouble. And so let's end our time with a time of prayer.
Father, we praise you because you alone are God. And by the power of your Spirit, work within us to be acceptable worshipers found only in your Son. And Father, take away our fear of all the troubling things in our world and and by your mercy cause it to be placed upon you. Lord, might we be God-fearing people and your courageous followers and helpers in this world. We thank you for hearing our prayers, for holding us in your hand, and give us the confidence that you will never let us go. I pray in Christ's name. Amen. And now to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or imagine, to him be glory and power now and forevermore. Amen and amen.